I am Anil Kumar and in this video we will understand relation between displacement velocity and acceleration when we have rational exponents in the given function. The position function of a moving object is s of t equals to t to the power of 5 over 2 7 minus t where t is greater than or equal to 0 in meters at time t in seconds. Determine the maximum displacement and speeding and slowing down interval for the object. So that is the question. You can pause the video, answer and then look into my suggestion. Now these kinds of questions are there in the test paper and sometimes difficult for students to answer and that is the reason why I have it for you. Now let's look into this given expression. We are given s of t as equals to t to the power of 5 over 2 times 7 minus t right now if you want to find derivative of this function it is a good idea to expand and then find the derivative the reason is that you do not have to apply the product rule correct so so let me rewrite this expression now so we'll write this expression as equal to when we expand we get 7 times t to the power of 5 over 2 minus t to the power of 5 over 2 plus 1 which is 7 over 2 right so that becomes s of t velocity you know is derivative of displacement so the derivative of displacement will be we'll use this form 7 times 5 over 2 t to the power of 5 over 2 minus 1 which is 3 over 2 minus 7 over 2 t to the power of 7 over 2 minus 1 5 over 2 correct so that is how you will find it is much much simpler so always whenever you have rational exponents try to write it in some or difference form and then find the derivative I have purposely not multiplied them and you will appreciate why now what we can do is we can take a common factor 7 over 2 is a common factor so 7 over 2 and t to the power of lower value 5 over 2 3 over 2 3 over 2 is lower right so that and inside we get 5 minus 5 over 2 minus 3 over 2 is 2 over 2 which is 1 so we could write this as t so this expression is for velocity right now let us find acceleration also then we will investigate so as far as acceleration is concerned it is derivative of velocity now to find the derivative of acceleration we should use the difference form not this form okay so we'll use this form so let's find derivatives 7 times 5 over 2 times 3 over 2 t to the power of 3 over 2 minus 1 which is half minus here we get 7 over 2 times 5 over 2 t to the power of 5 over 2 minus 1 which is 3 over now again factor so when you factor 7 and 5 in the numerator is common 35 you could write 2 and 2 which is I mean this is 2 4 let me write 4 here and as far as t is concerned t to the power of half is common right so what are we left with we are left with 3 here minus 3 over 2 minus half which is t so that is acceleration so we get equations for displacement factor the velocity and the acceleration now what do we need to find first thing which we need to find is the maximum displacement now maximum displacement will be when so let's try to analyze these and figure out how to get the answers for remaining parts maximum displacement so we say maximum displacement So that means we are looking for a turning point and at turning point what will happen velocity is going to be zero right so that is how we can get maximum displacement here we already know as far as the displacement function is concerned it is zero at zero and it is zero at seven so we are expecting an answer between zero and seven do you see that because displacement is 0 for t equals to 0 or t equals to 7. 
So maximum is between these two limits. Let's find where. So for that, we can equate velocity to zero and then calculate, right? So function which helps us to find this answer is this factor. So which is, we'll say, 7 over 2 t to the power of 3 over 2 times 5 minus t. Clearly, this function is 0 at t equals to 5. So t, t equals to 5 will give you the maximum displacement. So for maximum displacement, we can substitute 5 here and calculate the answer. You get the idea, right? So s of 5 is the maximum displacement. Let me write 5 here. So that means 5 to the power of 5 over 2 times 7 minus 5, right, which is 2. So it is 2 times 5 to the power of 5 over 2, and the units are meters. You can always use calculator and find this answer, correct? Okay, so this is the first part. Then we have to figure out when is the object speeding and when is it slowing down. Now to find speeding and slowing down intervals, what we need to really do is to figure out when is velocity positive or when is acceleration positive or negative, right? So let's analyze these, these graphs. So what we'll do is we'll take a timeline here. So let us say the timeline starts from t equals to zero. So the timeline starts from t equals to zero. Some critical points here are velocity we know is zero at five. So we'll take five here and acceleration is zero at three. So we'll take three here. Okay, so what we see as far as the velocity is concerned, if t is between 0 to 5, it is positive. So, so v of t is positive in this interval. But after 5, it is negative. If I put t as greater than 5, I get a negative value. So v of t is negative in, in this interval from here onwards, onwards, right? So that is how velocity is there. How about the acceleration? So as far as acceleration is concerned, we know acceleration will be positive when t is less than 3. So acceleration is positive here. So that is for a, right? So it is positive here. However, acceleration is negative when t is greater than 5. So acceleration is negative. This is for acceleration, okay, green color. Now we have to see when is the object speeding and when is it slowing down. So, so let's figure out speeding. Speeding means what? Speeding means product of velocity and acceleration is positive. That means both are negative or both are positive, right? So let us see. So in the first half, from 0 to 3, we see both are positive, right? So, so it is speeding in this interval from 0 to 3, right? So it is speeding. Now, after that, acceleration becomes negative, but velocity is positive. So in this portion, it is slowing down. So let me write that portion for slowing down. So we'll have this as slowing down. We say slowing down when product of velocity and acceleration is less than zero or negative. So this is slowing down. After that, both are negative, right? So both are negative means they are speeding. Do you see that? So for speeding, we get time intervals from zero to three and then after five and then from five onwards, right? So it is speeding. So as far as slowing down is concerned, it is slowing down between 3 to 5, right? So between this interval, it is slowing down. Reason is that sign of acceleration and velocity is opposite in this portion. So their product will be negative, that is less than 0. So that is how you should be answering this kind of question. Now it's very important to analyze this particular equation. You can actually find so many things from here. When is object going away or increasing? When is displacement increasing? When is displacement decreasing? So we can find from here that it is positive most of the time 
it is 0 at 0 and at 7, right? And also, you can see that it is maximum when velocity is 0, which is at t equals to 5. Exact value will be 2 times fifth root of 5, 5 squared, 25, fifth root of 25, which you can find from the calculator, right? So, likewise, we can answer such questions. I hope the steps are very clear. Remember, whenever you have rational exponents, I prefer you to expand and then find the derivative as we did. Otherwise, at times, second derivative may be very difficult to figure out, correct? So that is how you should be solving such questions. Thank you and all the best.